Welcome to a new episode of Fade on Sight. Your boy Rampage here with my brother Bear and our guest TJ Dillashaw. What's up, brother? <laughs> What's going on, man? How you been? I've been real good. You? Been good, man. Been good, man. It's been a while since I seen you. I, last time, I think the last time I saw you the most, we were training together. That was three years ago. Yep. Man, you guys train like mad men. Yeah, I've been seeing videos of you getting back in shape. So maybe like reminded me of us working out in the garage with Sam. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask you, like, how's the training going? Is it different than what we're doing? Kind of thing. Way different. <laughs> that's the hardest, that's the hardest thing I ever done, man. Tell yeah. Sam I said what's up. I, I, will, I, man. I miss him and everybody over there. We miss having you in the garage, dude, because seriously, that's like a place you get tortured, right? Like we go there to like work out or work our asses off for like three hours, like to the complete limit. You can't go any possibly harder. And then you got Rampage over here on the bike, like dying and still cracking jokes and <laughs> super inappropriate shit that's making Sam uncomfortable. We're all laughing about it. Dude. It was like yeah, so I, good. I have to joke when I train because yeah. I hate training. And I have to, you know what I'm saying? I have to joke. I have to keep myself entertained, or it's just gonna be even more hell for me. Yeah, man. I mean, it was it was great for us. Cause it's also, I mean, I'm just so focused on what I'm getting done and working my ass off and then having that outlet of just release of Rampage, like chirping in your ear, making you laugh. It makes the workout a lot better, you know? Man, I was really impressed and surprised at all the stuff you guys did. You know, you and and one, y'all were like, I'm twice y'all y'all size and y'all was stronger than me. <laughs> yeah, it's it was, crazy. It was like, It's like a functional strength, right? So... I could do my meathead workouts like what I'm doing now, right? I'm not, I'm, I'm retired, so I'm just trying to get jacked. I'm just trying to look good naked, right? <laughs> like, but when That's I was working out with Sam, it was um, like functional strength, like having to be strong and crazy movements, unpredictable, like standing on those BOSU balls. Oh, <laughs> Remember yeah. that video we did? We were standing on the BOSU balls and throwing an 80 pound ball at each yeah, other. Yeah, you guys were cheating. <laughs> they guys are, they cheaters, How man. How are they cheating? Because uh, you stand on a BOSU ball, like, um, you know, it's you It's like balance. a half ball with yeah. a platform on it. You know? Okay, yeah. And yeah. you balance it, and you got to throw it back at each other, right? And uh, you get penalized if you drop it, and they would throw it right at the damn thing. I'm not <laughs> oh, saying. Yeah, that's oh. cheating. That's yeah, cheating. cheating. Well, dude, the, the, okay, so the point of the game is, right, I want you to fall off. but I need you to reach to try to catch it. Yeah. If I just throw it at your chest, so that's an easy catch. But yeah. if I get you to catch it over here, then you're all balanced and yeah. to fall, so... Technique. And I was a new guy in the gym, so they knew all the little tricks. <laughs> what, what were you training for? I was training for Fedor. Like, people really thought that I didn't train for that fight. Honestly, that's You the, trained for it? I trained. That's the hardest I ever trained. Train with Sam. That's the, that's the hardest I ever trained. But um, I was telling the truth when I when I said I had, like, a medical issue. Mm -hmm. I, I just wasn't losing weight. I, uh, Sam did my 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 blood. He, he's a genius. And he looked at all my stuff. He was like, you don't have a thyroid problem. I'm like, I'm on this thyroid medicine. And... Against his advice, I quit the medicine cold turkey. And he was like, I don't think you should quit that medicine cold turkey because you don't know how your body's going to react to it. Got but, it. But I was like, he, but he was saying, like, that's why you're not losing weight because you're on this medicine. And my dumb ass thinking, like, Fuck, just stop the medicine. Yeah. But he said, he you said. You wean yourself off. Yeah, of he said, I should wean myself. And I didn't do it. I just, I just quit it. And my body just, and I wasn't eating carbs and stuff. I remember I was, a, I was on like a, uh, I was on like a strict diet. I wasn't eating carbs. And when I got to Japan, uh, one of my coaches said, oh, you should carb up for your fight. And and I just. No, oh, man. I know. I yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, simple carbs. That's right? hard. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, dude, thyroid is the one that's most commonly over um, prescribed. Like the doctors prescribe it to everyone to try to help with weight loss and what your function is doing instead of just switching it with diet and lifestyle. You right. Know? I agree with you. I, I saw two specialists and both of them said that they wasn't used to seeing people my age. Mm. Most times. They, so they didn't know what they were doing. They never seen athletes yeah. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I, and they just said, "Oh, you gotta take this medicine for the rest of your life." They didn't look into my blood like like um, uh, Coach, Coach Cal. Cal yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll it'll do a lot. You have a damaged thyroid, and then people are prescribing products that you shouldn't be taking. Next thing you know, you're just damaging it even worse to an extent that you're never coming back from. You can't digest your food. Your food, you know, you just get bloated. It's hard. And, and your levels change, right? So if they did a blood test on you and they need to prescribe you this much uh, thyroid medication and then they don't test you like every month, every other month, like your levels change. And so your 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 medicine should change as well too with it. And people yeah. just get prescribed and they're on it for three, four years and just fucks their body up. Man, I, and I learned that shit, man. It's, it was so hard for me to lose weight for those three years. And um, I started training with my um, new coach now and he taught me is... I, it's like it's a secret, but it's not. It's just you cut out the carbs and the sugars, and then I fast, and I'm losing like a pound on a pound and a half a day. How long are you fasting for? 
Uh, I fast for 24 hours. Oh, but, shit. But then on Sundays, I don't eat. So Sunday, I fast for for, for 48 hours. So right okay. now, I haven't, I haven't eaten since Saturday night at 5 o'clock. Every day you're fasting? I eat once a day. So it's a 24, it's a 24 hours. Wow. I, eat, I won't eat for 24 hours. What time do you eat? Uh, my time to eat is 5 o'clock, but since I train with him at 4 o'clock because my schedule, got, I don't get a chance to eat to 6.37. Okay. Know? He's, he's been dropping a lot of weight. I can tell, man. Your face looks good. Like, yeah. your eyes are clear. Weights looks, looks good. good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Looks I, good on the weights. Yeah. yeah. My, it looks like it's reversing my age as, 100%, as well. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, fast. yeah, you look younger. Yeah, thank you guys. I I, I got tired of being fat, man. People fat shaming me on <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I wasn't getting used bullied. To, Rampage Jackson, yeah, getting bullied. Yeah, God I, damn it, I loved it, and it motivated, motivated me. And I was looking, I was trying to do stuff, and I was trying to use medicine. I'm not gonna lie, I started like taking testosterone and and growth hormone, but you know that's, that wasn't the way. Now I'm training with Sean, I'm all natural. I damn. haven't I haven't taken anything in a couple months, and damn. the weight's just falling off. Nice man, congrats. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks. But speaking yeah. of retirement, you talking about you retiring, and most people retire, they get fat and stuff. You, yeah, you looking good. I'm getting jacked, man. I'm I'm going back to my meathead days, like when I was in college. You know, um, I didn't want to retire. Uh, it's like been kind of like a little, real bitter thing. It's been hard for me to actually be around the sport recently. Like even helping my uh, training partner Juan Archuleta, he's fighting in Japan and risen for the belt. I'm Big going. fight coming up. It's been hard for me to wrap my head around being around the sport at the same time being forced out of it. And also my career just kind of pan out the way it did towards the end. Like really just bitter, you know? So um, I'm hoping that uh, every doctor I've met, like the world specialists on my shoulder, they're all telling me they can't be back good enough to be able to fight again. Um, doctors aren't always right. Right. But I have to have a super extensive uh, shoulder surgery. I'm wait Like what I'm waiting on right now is some cadaver parts. I need a cadaver shoulder head bone, like a moral head. Because mine's got all dented. It's a Hillsax lesion because I dislocated it like 20 times. Yeah. And put like a big dent in my shoulder. Wow. So they got to cut that off and replace it. And then I got to. What do they replace that with? A cadaver. Like actual human parts? Yeah. Like uh, they'll grow it in the lab and it's got to be my blood type. It's got to fit wow. my size. Wolverine. Um, so I've yeah. been asking them, hey, what blood type are you? <laughs> we'll run you over with my truck. You what, know what's, what I mean? what's your blood type? Um, oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's 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 a, a very common blood type. So mm -hmm. O negative is a universal blood type. O negative. O negative. But what, are you O? Are you I'm o, o positive? Yeah. Now yeah. O O negative. Uh, o okay. O positive is more common than O negative though. Mm -hmm. Negative is 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 rare. Yes. Yeah, negative. Yeah. That, just the negative is rare. Yep. But you know, I was um, I was I was kind of uh, I was kind of disappointed or sad that you retired because you know you had come come back off that hiatus and uh and I I knew you I knew you was injured you know. Everybody that knew you, like saw you at training gym, we never said anything. Mm -hmm. But I knew you was injured. I just was, you know how you got that hope, like the Karate Kid hope. Yeah. Like I hope that I hope that motherfucker don't come out. Yep, yep. You know, I was fighting a guy that I match up really well against. Aljamain Sterling had the belt, mm -hmm. has the belt, mm -hmm. and I don't think he's that great. He's yeah, he's got some awesome grappling. He's got some tricky back takes, uh, but his stand up is just non threatening at all. I could let him hit him hit me as hard as he wants, and nothing would happen. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna take this fight. Match up so well with him. Yeah. And at the same time, this is going to be my fourth shoulder surgery on this shoulder. Don't know if it's ever going to be the same. Um, so it's either I, I sit out. I don't get my title shot when I come back, right? So I sit out. Hopefully I ever come back. So my mind was that, you know what? Like, I got to take this shot. You know, like this could be my last fucking fight. And I just match up so well with the guy. Why wouldn't I take it? Yeah, I, I, I personally think that when people take a long time off, when they come back, they should have a woman fight. But no, you went straight in for the belt. And I was I was really surprised about that. Well, actually, I fought someone more. So I fought, after my two-year suspension, I fought Corey San, um, Sanhagen. So that wasn't your first fight back? No, it was my second. So I fought Sanhagen, number one contender spot. Um, and that was a way more dangerous fight. But I was supposed to get a title shot. But then Aljamain and uh, Jan had that illegal how did How did I miss that fight? That was at the Apex, though. Yeah. Yeah, that was oh, the Apex. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He won on a... Decision. The split decision. Split decision. I, I fucking blew my much knee sucks now. So I blew my knee out in the first round. The end of the first round, I blew my knee out and I had to fight this motherfucker on one leg. Yeah, wow. I did hear about yeah. that fight. I didn't I didn't yeah, Tiki mm -hmm. told me. I, I missed it and Tiki told me. Okay, I yeah. remember now. Yeah. How does yeah. that work? How do you fight on one knee? Just fucking mental toughness. I mean, obviously the pain hurts, right? But when you have that much adrenaline going, you like you can tough it through that kind of pain. But more so I lost all footwork, my knee so Blew it out at the end of the first round. I knew it was fucked up. I won that first round. I sat down. 
told my coach, he's like, bro, I fucked my knee up. Like, it's gone. And Dwayne's like, forget about it. Let's go. We, we got to win, you know? And so uh, <laughs> I went back out, went for the second round. By far his best round, cut me open, a massive gash right here. And then uh, I remember taking his back in the second round. I went to go put my hooks in, and my knee fully blew out the side. And I had to, like, I had to, like bail off his back and give up position. So that will be a fight that I will always remember by far. The, like, that fight, as well as, well as my first bra fight, will stick with me for the rest of my life just because how hard that fight was. I mean, I was going against a killer on one leg and, like, off on a two-year suspension, right? Yeah. Getting all the hate yeah. for being suspended. Yeah. And then coming back, and I knew I needed to win that fight, and then I blow my fucking knee out. I'm just yeah. like, dude, Let me explain to you, Barry, how tough you got to be to do that. Because I, I don't know if I can do that. And I feel like I'm one of the toughest people on this planet. Yeah. But just, just um, the thought in the back of your head, like, oh, if I continue, I'm going to mess it up more. It just shows how bad he want that, you know what I'm saying? That's, like it didn't matter. You didn't care to damage it to the extent of it may never be, you know. Yeah, not fixable. a lot of fighters. Not a lot of fighters would do that. You, no, I don't know if you noticed, but you the first person to talk to me about stem cells. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. And then, um, then I went over to uh, Columbia and and got stem cells from BioAccelerator, mm-hmm. and I trusted stem cells because of what you said. Because because mm-hmm. um, I saw you, you know, you I saw you was going back and getting you was getting it from Panama somewhere. I've went, I've gone to Panama and I've I've also gone to BioAccelerator. Are you Are you been to BioAccelerator? I've gone seven times total. Oh wow! Wow! I avoided surgery for two and a half years fighting for world. I, I, when I beat um, Cody Garbrandt to get my belt back, I fully blew up my shoulder. That then too, uh, same shoulder, playing the fucking coach's challenge. So to win ten grand or whatever it is, right? They have coach versus coach, and I win my team money if I win as well, too. But oh, it's, yeah. On it's awesome on, party, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's on a balance beam, okay? So we're above a pool on a balance beam, like a gymnast balance beam, and we're playing tetherball. And it's in February, so it's freezing-ass cold, and I fall off the balance beam, and I go to catch myself, and I, like, dislocate my shoulder uh, out the back. But I was able to f- still fight in that fight because I went and got stem cells done. They but like, you knocked him out. You knocked him out with the bad shot. Which fight was yeah. it? The second? The, the, fr- the first fight. I knocked him out with my right hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how you a wrestling and you kicking folks in the head, knocking them out and knocking them down and knocking people out and stuff like that? I just fell in love with striking. I fell in love with knocking people out, right? So I wrestled my whole life. Wrestled since I was eight years old. I didn't learn to throw a punch until I was 24 when I decided to become a fighter. And I just fell in love with the idea of doing a new sport and hopefully getting paid for it. But just, and then once I started doing Muay Thai up at Alpha Mill with uh, Master Tong, I just fell in love with that. I fell in love with getting better. I fell, yeah. and I'm, I'm coordinated. I'm an athletic guy, so I was able to pick. If you can dance, you can you can strike. I'm telling you, if you got rhythm, you can strike. And I fell in love with it, and so I just gave my all to striking, and then it turned out to be my best weapon with an MMA. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting that he's a wrestler. Yeah. I mean, going into, you know, we talk about the ultimate fighter. Like, we're seeing Chandler and McGregor right now, and mm. everybody's, you know, on the internet talking, you know, McGregor's not a good coach. You mm. know, obviously, we know he's a great fighter, but, you know, is it real? Is it fake? You know, is he setting his team up for failure? What is it like, like being on the ultimate fighter and having to coach these guys? Like, what do you think of McGregor Chandler? This like guy we, knows too. He we, coaches well. We, yeah. We, we went into it with him a little yeah, bit. What's, yeah. what's your thoughts on that? So I was a contestant back in 2011. I ended up taking second and I've been a coach for your Faber twice. And then I also coached it myself. So I've got a lot of experience in the ultimate fighter house. And it was, when I was on it as a contestant, I was a, I only had four fights. I was a fucking nobody, right? So to me, it was fun. To where if I would have been an experienced guy like myself and going back and having to be a contestant, I would have fucking hated it, right? But me being new to the lights, new to the camera, it was exciting for me, invigorating. So I said, fuck it, let's build a name for myself and went for it. Loved it. I loved the show. It was like six weeks. You left your phone at home. No one can get a hold of me. Like I feel like I was so productive and got so much better while I was there because of I didn't have any... No entertainment whatsoever. No distractions. Right? Huh? Zero distractions, right? So I actually really enjoyed it and got a lot better while I was there. Um, Bisbing was my coach and uh, uh, Rob McCola and Tiki and those guys were partying their ass mm-hmm. off, having a good time, but coming in and giving us their all. Smelling like tequila, but they did a great job of giving us their all, you know? Um, and then it really taught me how I needed to be a coach when I was on the show. And, uh, you know, I made sure to like show up for in the morning after their weigh-ins for doing shakeouts and I mean, I'd make sure I'd make bring entertainment to the house so the guys weren't bored. And I did a really good job coaching the show. We won all fights but one. 
Just like your situation, but backwards, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't remember, I don't even remember we, us even winning one. I think you won one fight. Oh, damn. Yeah, I think yeah, you won yeah. one yeah. fight. Tink, I think, I think you was there. Won one. Yeah. You won one. Who, who was that? My, my memory is bad. I mean, my favorite fighter, though, was Kimbo. That was, oh, just, yeah, that was yeah. the highlight for me, though. I don't yeah. remember who won for you, though. I really don't. Yeah, it was, re- it was really bad. And everybody looked at me like I'm a bad coach. And I was like, these motherfuckers should have known how to fight before they got here. <laughs> So is is, is Connor? It, I don't watch it. Have you been watching? I it? haven't watched one oh, okay, episode. So you, don't, yeah. Yeah. you don't watch it, man. Like I said, like I've I've already been a guy that hasn't really been diving into the sport when I'm not fighting because for me it's like taking work home with me. When I watch fight, unless there's someone that I love, it's my teammate or something, I'll watch their fights or if it's a super hyped up fight, I'll watch it. But a lot of times I get anxiety. Like if I go home and sit on my couch and I watch these guys walking out, all I can do is think about myself. All I can think about is like. I'm walking out to the cage. I'm getting ready. And it like really kind of gives me like those butterflies that, to be honest, I don't want. I'm sitting on my couch yeah. trying to hang out. So I've yeah. never been one that dove into it anyways. And especially now with me, th- I, look, dude, I know that I'm still the best guy in the weight class. for 100, By far, I believe I'm the best guy in the weight class. And for the sport to be taken from me the way that it was, it just doesn't sit well with me. You know, it's so fucking, it kind of pisses how, me off. How old are you now? 37. So so if, if um, God willing, and you get your shoulder good and come back will we see you back in there one day yeah if shoulders good man i'm definitely i have to get back in there i can't I can't let it go out the way it did i see that in you yeah. yeah what is it what is it about what is it about fighting is it that you just are this passionate because you know you're that good is it that you have unfinished business are you upset with some of the things that went down what is it there's a fuel there's a passion in you obviously that's there yeah and it's it used to be the love of the sport it used to. I don't love the sport anymore. I really don't. I mean, I, it's tough, man. It's a tough lifestyle. It's tough on the family. It's fucking, I have to, the way that I am, I have to be all in. I have to do everything. If I'm going to give myself a shot, I got to go for it. Um, but for me, I think it's multiple things you brought mm-hmm. up. It's the way things kind of turned out that I know that I'm the best in the weight class that, uh, I can come back and get the belt and, and, and just the competitive edge of me. When I'm good at something, I'm going to do it till the wheels fall off, you know? Um, the money's getting better, just everything all around. There's a, there's a lot out there that, that makes me want to do it. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going all in, you know? What it, yeah, what does it look like, though, if you come back? Well, fuck, man, it'll be a long road. So hopefully I get surgery next month. I'm just, again, I'm waiting on those cadaver parts. And then it's a full-blown year recovery, So right? So I wouldn't be at the earliest 38 till I can start training again. Um, and then giving myself like a legitimate chance to get back into shape, take a right fight too, right? Like there's tons of like hyped up fights I could take. I could you know, hopefully fight Cruz or someone like that, you know? Um, Would you do some gym fights just to get the uh, ring rust? I think it's a good idea. You know, like almost like if you say you had a mat in here, right? Like you could do it. Like invite a bunch of people here to watch you like a sparring day. We used to do this in Denver. We'd invite a bunch of people to the gym. And you'd be sparring one guy like it's a fight, and you'd come out there and you wear like puffy gloves, shin guards, and really get used to the, the energy again, the nerves of it all. Wow. Like visualize yourself coming out to the cage. I think it's a really good idea that a lot of fighters don't continue to do, especially right. with the time off. You know? Right. Because, you know, I took um, three, this is the longest I ever um, been off. Everybody think I'm retired, but I'm not officially retired. And you can't I'm, be retired when you're looking like that, dude. I know. And yeah. I, you know, but I'm 45 now. Yeah. I'm way older than you. And I, but, you know, I'm with this new league, uh, the UFL. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I, I, I want to promote them, and I think one of the best ways to do it is for me to fight for them. Oh, yeah. And so uh, I'm thinking about getting back out there, maybe fighting around by December, and uh, I I might do some, you know, some gym fights just yeah. to get back. I, I don't know. I don't know how boxers do it. Boxers, they fight like once a year or once every two years, and they don't seem to have any ring rust. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, I mean, I do think ring rust is – a lot mental, right? Yeah. That's why it is nice to come in and get the, the nerves out of the way. Yeah. It's not so much you forget how to do something. It's more the fact of how nervous you're going to be when you walk there. Like, look, you've been out for, what, three and a half years, you yeah, said? Three and a half years. You're going to be 45 years old. Everyone's going to be watching all Rampage is coming back. It's like, that weighs on you, right? Yeah. And by getting rid of some of those nerves, by living through it, like, get get a crowd of people. Get, like, throw a fucking party. You know what I mean? And you can make money off it as well, too, to be yeah. honest, right? Like, I would yeah. love to see you fight. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put a ring let's in put, here. Let's put a fucking mad octagon lean. in here. Oh, yeah, it's game yeah. over. Put oh, a, that sounds like a good idea. Can we make money? Because, hey, this yeah. guy's a genius that's making money. Yeah, yeah, we, I know. <laughs> I've been paying attention to him. He might be on the card, too. It might be a co-main. <laughs> <laughs> Sign yeah. me up. Speaking of uh, 
business, man. I, I I was real proud of you. You came out with clean juice. Oh yeah. And you came out with yeah. it at the perfect, the perfect time. time. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, why did he name this damn business clean juice? Dude, I didn't name it. It fell on my lap. It's a franchise. It started uh, in the East Coast. They heard me talk about doing um, Coach Cal's uh, secret dim juice on uh, uh, pod, Joe Rogan's podcast. Uh, they wanted to sponsor me, and I said, "Fuck that!" I was opening my own store. And then I get suspended. And it's like perfect timing. It's that like, was oh <laughs> man, that was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's three of them right now in Southern California. We got one in Dana Point, Agora Hills, and then we're building one in Santa Monica right now. For real, and yeah. it tastes really good, huh? Yeah, it's great. I've heard people raving about it. Say it tastes great. It's uh, U.S. the only USDA organic franchise in the whole nation. So everything in our door, you know, it's got to be 95 percent of things inside of our store have to be USDA organic to actually have that stamp to throw it. Door. Where's the closest one to me in Orange County? I'm gonna come and get me some. Dana more. Point. Okay. Dana Point. I gotta go. I gotta yeah. check that out. I like the organic, the yeah. healthy stuff because I'm I'm just gonna be 100. No, I've been going to Colombia mm-hmm. and I, I lead the country going to Thailand and stuff, and our food here is just so poisonous, bro. How about this? When you leave, I go to Colombia or I go to Panama and I'll not eat the greatest, right? Like I'm not eating great, but I always lose, lose weight. weight. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Their meats don't have an- yeah. all the antibiotics and bullshit and hormones in it. Mm-hmm. It's fucking crazy. I and mean, everything here is filled with salt. Everything's manufactured. Preservatives. Everything's yeah. preservatives. My first time going to Colombia, uh, you know, I'm a very picky eater. That's something people might not know about me. I'm probably one of the most picky people. I know I'm the pickiest person I ever met. So I can't eat everything. It's, mm-hmm. just, it's just really weird. And I, and I went there and I, and I tried to eat some of that stuff. It was gross. I tried McDonald's, spit it out. It was gross. So come to find out, the only thing that I liked my first time going there, it was Pizza Hut or Domino's, one of those two. Okay. And KFC. Yeah. Don't make no black jokes. Nobody. nobody. <laughs> KFC. <laughs> KFC. Bro, I ate KFC and pizza every day. But every now and then, my friends went to some restaurant and didn't. I could yeah. Find something small that I like. Yeah, and I just didn't like the way the food tastes. And I found out I didn't like the way the food tastes because it didn't, it didn't have any chemicals in it. Mm-hmm. And I lost weight, bro. I lost weight. Eating yeah, fast I mean, food food, every day. food's not supposed to be able to last in your pantry for a year. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. like we weren't like our grandparents didn't eat like that. They went to no. the market every two three days. You know, we forgot about that. American right. society, it's like a year. Right. You eat once a day. What are you eating? Well, I eat steak, eggs. And and uh, sweet potatoes, and I drink my my vegetables most of the time because I, I don't like vegetables. Yeah, you yeah. drink them. I drink them. How do you make it? Cold uh, press juicing it. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like is it what y'all do? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's a cold press, and you actually your body will absorb eighty percent more of the nutrients really from doing a cold press masticating juicing than if you were to like the amount of juice I drink right. If you were to put how much it takes to make that juice on this table, it'd be impossible to eat it. It's too much food, but I can drink it in a juice. And uh, I'll absorb more of the nutrients by doing so. But uh, and your body could process it. Mm-hmm. Really, it processes it easier. It's broken down without any heat, right? So the best way to eat vegetables is raw. Don't cook them, right? Because you get all the nutrients. But if you do a cold press, you're already breaking it down. Your body can absorb it a lot faster. I can eat raw broccoli if I had some ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the ranch is for you, though. Yeah, the ranch is Nah, I think that's... Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the, that'd be yeah. the problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, we good with that. I don't even like... I don't like broccoli, but if I dip it in some ranch, the broccoli or some carrot, if I... I yeah, I, I gotta cook broccoli. It's just too much to eat raw, dude. Yeah. Nah, I can only get through one little leaf, one little tree. I'm yeah. done. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, to I'm gonna tell you one vegetable that I do love, and it's, it's bok choy. Hong <laughs> hee fong choy. I love, I love bok choy. Bok choy. Bok choy. It was that Chinese, a Chinese um, vegetable. I love bok choy. Yeah. yeah. Bok choy is good. Yeah, bok choy is like one of my favorites. Don't start talking about food. I, I haven't eaten in forty eight hours. I sit here and talk about food all I day. I love it, dude. He yeah. he loves Asian food, and yeah. he, you love like Asian women. Oh, I, it's, listen, it's pretty crazy how fascinated you are with dude. Asian culture. Like you love it, you support it, you I, always talk about it. Yeah, I, I love I love Asian culture. I do love Asian women. I love all women. Yeah, they put that out there. I do. <laughs> I do. I love all women. I haven't dated an Asian girl in a long time. Just to put that out there. People think that I only date Asian girls, but I do. My mom told me the first girl I ever kissed was Asian. That's nice. So I, I do love Asian culture. I'm going to Japan. And I was just going to say, I, yeah. I, I mean, you're a superstar out there, right? I used to be. They yeah. they don't, I don't think they recognize me anymore. But I think if I wore a chain mm-hmm. or some camouflage pants, people would recognize. But I learned this one time. I was there uh, a couple of years ago and um, I was there promoting something. So, so people knew I was there. Mm-hmm. And, and I was overweight too at this time. You know, I was fat <laughs> as fuck. And this is one type of guy. He had a picture of me. 
And it was a couple of black guys out there, me, my cousin, and a couple other people, and some Japanese people. And he came with the picture. He looked at the picture. I saw him look at me, looked at the picture. I didn't say nothing. He looked, he looked. And then my Japanese friend, he didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't notice that the Japanese guy was looking for me. And we were just out there outside. We was all just hanging out. Then my friend said, Hey, Rampage, come on. He said, Oh, uh, Rampage, what? Don't go this one. You know, speaking Japanese, Where, where's Rampage? And he went to the Japanese guy, Rampage, what? Where's Rampage? And the guy said, He's right there. <laughs> he looked at me, he said, oh, oh. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't you're, you're a little thick back. I was thick. I was thick, thick. I was thick page. But Man, it, it's like it's like honestly, but it's coming off you quickly now. It's coming off, but you gotta it's think fasting, about it. Dude, that fasting's gonna do it for It's you. gonna do it. But you yeah. gotta think about this though. This, this I can say this because I have uh Asian kids. I can say this now. Y'all can <laughs> listen, I can say this. It's gonna be good. It's gonna it's not, yeah. not it's not that good. Okay. That good. I'm saying, but honestly, how we think all Asian people look alike. Mm-hmm. They think we all look alike, mm-hmm. so it's not that bad, right? So, yeah. uh, it's true. I, yeah. went, I, I go to Japan a lot, and I and my best friends there. I lose them. I tell them, I say, "Hey, bro, when I if I don't don't walk off without me because you get in that crowd, I ain't gonna know which one you." <laughs> and yeah, true. loves going to Japan. Loves I, Asia. I love. Well, it. dude, you get to go to Japan, and then people let you slap them. Oh, yeah. Rampage just gets to slap people for fun. Oh yeah, my record is a uh, whole basketball team. They just want you to slap them. They just want you to slap them. But you really slapping them with your palm or are you going light on them? No, no, I slap them, but honestly, I don't I don't try to slap them real hard. I just do it like to make that sound. Do you guys know where I got that from? No. Do you guys know who Antonio Inoki was when yes. he passed away? Yes. No, who's that? Okay, Antonio Inoki, he was a real famous pro wrestler in Japan. He had something to do with pride back, back in the day. He fought Muhammad Ali before we was born. That's right. He was the first MMA, one of the first MMA fights. Wow. He fought in Muhammad Ali. He was real. He's he's like Muhammad Ali in Japan. That's how famous wow. he is, right? And he used to slap people? He used to slap people. I seen him. I was watching t- TV in a hotel after one of my fights, just sitting there watching TV. And he was in a mic uh, on the mic saying some stuff. I don't know what he was saying. And he had this couple there, older couple. They looked like they was in their 60s, 70s. And he was going to smack the lady. And he was setting it up. And she said, oh, let me take my earrings off. So I already messed them up. Stop. Bro, <laughs> let me tell you this, bro. I was like shocked. She took her earrings off. And she took the microphone from him. She said, Enoki. Then she said some Japanese, that's the Dragon Balls or whatever, some shit. And she smacked him. And that motherfucker, he looked at her like, bitch, are you crazy? And he said, wham, wham, smack it like that, two smacks. No one just give one. And she flew off the fucking screen. And the crowd went, wow. I think he knocked the bitch out. I was like, I'm slapping people. And from that moment on, I've been slapping the shit out of people in Japan. They love it. They Thank line you. up for it, dude. <laughs> they love it. That yeah. is the craziest thing ever, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see you doing that though, because yeah. you have that personality. Like, yeah, come over here, I'll smack you. But I love the Japanese fans. So, yeah. for me, they're the, they're the best fans, bro. How is it when you're in the crowd for the fights? Is it like from like Pride Days and stuff like that? Is it quiet? Yeah, bro, that's so crazy. You can hear your corner. You, one time I was fighting, Vanille getting my ass kicked, and I heard one of my corner men fart. <laughs> How do you stay serious, while, while you're bro? getting stomped out. Yeah, while well, I'm getting stomped out. I'm getting kneed, I'm getting kneed in the face nah, like 14, uh, 14 times. This motherfucker. Uh, I'm like, oh, God damn it. He's distracting me. Here I just is, saw man. something. I don't know what it was on. You talking about the time where you got knocked out by Vandalay and like hanging in the ropes. And he said something to you backstage before you got stomped oh, the second time. Yeah, that was no, that was the third when I fought him in the UFC. Okay. Yeah. I just saw something posted about that. Yeah, yeah. That's a true about. story. Uh, yeah. we, we fought twice. And no, Vanellay never liked me. Mm. He never liked me from the first time he saw me. He never liked me. And um, and after the the weigh ins in the UFC, I was really hungry. I was hangry, and and we had to go backstage wait for Dana. And this motherfucker got in my face. I know you remember my knees. I know you remember my knees saying a lot of shit. Yeah, I don't know if you he really want to. I don't know if you really want to say that to someone you're about to fight. I mean, he's going to get in your head, though. You know what I mean? It's all mental warfare. You got to think about the things that some of these guys do. Like, the first time I had to really deal with it. Like, all my fights in the UFC until I fought Dominic Cruz were just like, hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. Respect. I get all the good stuff. And then I fought Dominic Cruz, and he'd been privy to the sport. And he's like, you know, he's a smart man. Yeah. And he just talked mad shit and just pissed me off the whole fight camp. We had to do, like, face-to-faces with each oh, other, yeah. like, a lot of promotion. And he pissed me off so bad. I remember fighting that fight. Lost a split decision that I don't agree with, but I remember fighting that fight the whole time, so fucking angry trying to knock him out that it like threw me off my game. To where if I would have been level headed, like the fourth and fifth round, I almost wow. fucking finished yeah. him. 
because I was like, finally like calm down. I finally was like, all right, I need to kick his legs. I need to counter him more. I was chasing him. I'm like chasing, throwing punches. He's dipping and diving and I'm not able to hit him. Calm down the fourth and fifth round. I almost finished him. If I would have done that from the beginning, if I'd have been level headed, yeah, I would have been walking the park. Yeah, for I, I saw him. He was like, I think that was for the belt, right? Yeah. He like walks out with the belt, starts pointing at the ring and mm-hmm. the audience. I mean, going into that fight, and obviously now you're retired, and hopefully we see you back. I, I like this. I hope that's yeah. Hope yeah. The quotations I think everybody right. knows you coming back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck it. But like, who who are people that you think you have unfinished business with? Who are people that you wish you could have fought or or you still want to fight? Like, there's got to be someone that... I mean, I'd just... love to get that Cruz fight back. That's a big one. Um, I don't know if he's going to last much longer either, right? I mean, he's commentating, he's doing that, he's staying healthy. Um, I'd still love to fight Sterling again. I don't care what weight class he is, is in, because he's talking about going to 45s. Um, you know, he's going to most likely beat O'Malley. He's probably going to have the most uh, uh, title defenses because of that fight. So it's like, that's something I had to get back. I believe I'm the best in the weight class, the best that's been in a weight class and he's got that right now. So I'd love to get that rematch in. But obviously, we'll see where the future comes. But those are two unfinished business. Yeah. And then the sport, man, it fucking changes so fast. Like, who knows who's going to be on top or what the next hyped up guy is. You really you know? think Sterling is going to get past O'Malley? Yeah, I do, man. I mean, I've underestimated O'Malley when he fought Yawn and things like that. But what Sterling is so good at is, is O'Malley's biggest weakness. I'm rooting for O'Malley just because I think he's a good good character for the sport. He's great for the weight class. Um, I've interacted with him. I actually like the guy. Um, but Sterling's just too good. Like, he's like, his pressure is going to be there to get the takedown. He's for sure going to get the takedown. And then he's going to get the back. Like, he'll end up submitting. He's know? a good wrestler. Yeah. Sterling. He's a good wrestler, but he's like a good just like, he's so desperate for the takedown because his striking sucks so bad. Um, and I could, I could tell that he's been scared a lot. He's gotten better at it, but he's always been like so scared. That he's like desperate, so he's he'll do whatever he can to get a takedown. I'll shoot like three, four times. He'll stuff all of them. Eventually, he'll get it. Where he's good is he's really good on the back and he's really good in like jujitsu. And he's strong, man. I felt him, even though I had one arm. Like mm. I still feel like his <laughs> pressure and how strong he was. You know? Well, shit, because I know you're strong. I, yeah, I, I, bro. The him and one Archuleta was flipping like big, right? Three hundred pound tires up a hill. <laughs> It's functional strength, huh? I've never seen. Is that I, what it is? I've like, never where, seen. Uh, where do you get that from? Because obviously you're not the biggest dude. You're not like six six like this dude. I How tall you six six? No, I wish. I think it's wrestling. I really do believe the the strength I came from was just wrestling my entire life. Wrestling since I was eight year old, eight, eight years old, and being in that sport developed such a core strength that you can't trade. Um, and then just working out since I've been eight years old. You know, yeah, and just uh, doing it the right way with the right coach and. When Rampage came in, we'd already been working out with Sam for like three, four years. Like at least me, he wasn't working out longer, a lot longer than that. So mm. we had a head start on him, right? But yeah. the functional training, training the right way, you know, you gotta you gotta be strong when you're off balance. That's why we do a lot of the Bosu ball training. We do a lot of foot like what Sam does, it's really smart, is he'll crush us. Like uh be, for our warm up is the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. Like you'll be like you should you get done with the warm up and you're like, all right, man, good practice. It's like, nah, it's just a warm up. Like, we crush us on the bike. We do 300 watt intervals for like a fucking half hour. And now we lift weights. Right? When I feel like I can't lift my arms off the ground, like in a fight, like, say, if you go to a lactic cast and you're tired, now you got to be strong. Right. So, like, getting that strength. So, you train for that. Yeah. That's something you can kind of condition your body. Yeah. You could, I mean, you can train all forms of your, like, so the same way you train your body to get in shape aerobically, like, your aerobic base is very important. But then you got your anaerobic base, you got your lactic threshold base. Like, there's dip, like yeah. that's the hardest thing about MMA. It's not like these other sports where you're playing a game. Like we have so many energy systems we have to hit. Like we don't like so you need to be explosive and powerful, but then at the same time you got to last 25 minutes, right? And then you got to be able to push yourself into this red zone that's called lactic threshold to where you go until your body fails, and you got to do a quick recovery so you can continue to keep going. As well as I got to do my I got to run two or three times a week as well too to keep my aerobic base solid. Like. Wow. It's very if once you get to the tip top, man. Now this is how well the sports come in. It's very scientific. I'm gonna tell you, training with Coach Kyle fucked up my sex life because that training was so hard. I didn't want to smash before. I, you know, what you I'm didn't want to smash before practice. No, hell no. <laughs> you you ever you ever had to, you know you like ah oh, babe you no know, chill out I gotta go train today. I mean I feel like just naturally when I'm at fight camp anyways I lose a sex drive. Right? For real? Yeah, I do, man. I, well. I know this for a fact that I've, I've, I've just crashed my testosterone levels through me training for so long. I've, I've been redlighting my body, wrestling and doing things the wrong way for so long. 
that you're building up too much cortisol, your testosterone crashes. And when that happens, man, you're not not as horny, you know? Shit, I ain't never had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've been good on that problem. I've been good. I, you know, I, yeah, I never, you know what? I live in Orange County and that's how I know there, there's a God because I'm going to tell you why. Because girls, I'm just not their type here. And <laughs> if I go back home, I'll, I'll be a fucking man whore. Where's home? Memphis. Okay. When I go back home, girls, you know, girls hit on me and stuff like that. And, you know, girls like my style out there. But here in Orange County, bro, I, it's just, so I I don't have a whole lot of opportunity. I remember when I was fighting in Japan. <laughs> it's real talk, bro. It's real talk. I remember. When- Coming from the guy I pulled up to Sharky's, he's there with 15 girls. You know, you know? <laughs> and I ain't smashed none of them. <laughs> I remember when I was fighting in Japan, I used, you know, you're not supposed to have sex before your fight, but yeah. I wouldn't get sex till I got to Japan, <laughs> right before my fight. You know, you get there on like the, like the Tuesday yep. and you fight on the Sunday over mm-hmm. there. I wouldn't get sex until I got there. It's I crazy. mean, I mean, I, I remember one time I pulled up, you're like, yo, come get a tea. I'm like, all right, no problem. I pull up, I'm like 22. The guy's got his green Lambo outside, he walks out. There's like five girls with him. He's drinking a tea. Like, what, where did all these girls come from? He's like, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing good. Just dropping off a package to this guy. Just walks back into the shop, drinking his tea. Week later, I call him. I'm like, man, dude, you got all the girls on the lot. He's like, ah, oh, no, nah, that's just the spot to hang out with. We good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they won't let me smash. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, like y'all said, you know, you know, I like Asian girls and stuff, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, when I was trying to go for an Asian girl, I always had to lie like I got a small penis. Because <laughs> they scared. Like, no, you black. No, 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 no. You like this. Yeah. I'm like, no. I'm, I'm tiny black guy. I'm, I always tell him. I'll I'm, be gentle. <laughs> yeah. I always tell him I'm the starter kit. <laughs> I'm the black guy you start with. <laughs> you know, oh, go, going into like this, like uh, psychological warfare. Like yeah. we talk about it. We've seen it. And like, you know, you always talk about this. Like it's all mental. You know, he's calling John Jones Neo. And, you know, we watch videos of you and you're dealing with your eye and you're dealing with the audience and you're dealing with people, you know, we see guys like Peter Young, you know, he gets DQ'd and then all of a sudden three out of his last four fights, you know, he's losing. And it's like, this guy was a superstar at one point. Like, where does that, like, even for Peter Young, for example, what's your take on that? Like what psychological point is he at that he can't just get out of a slump like that in MMA? Now that he's in the slump, there's the pressure to get out of that slump. It's like, once you've lost three or four fights, it's like your, your job is on the fucking line. Right, you don't have a contract where you're guaranteed to continue to fight. Like they can cut you at any time. So if he, now that he's yeah. lost, he's got that pressure coming to a cage. Like I have to fucking win so that I can feed my family. Not only just because all these people, millions of people, are watching me on TV, but it's my livelihood. Right. So that's a tough one, man. I think a lot of guys should use like sports psychologists. Right. Um, I was just he about, called I, it. I was just about to. I was just about to talk about. He it. called it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just about to talk about it. I was just about to say, yeah, a, a lot of uh, other sports mm-hmm. that you utilize them, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm watching this um, show right now. It's on Netflix called Quarterback. It's mm-hmm. a really good ass show. Um, but the, a lot of them, like the, their team, will supply a sports psychologist, right? Which we're all our own teams. I'm the CEO of TJ Dillashaw, right? Like you're the CEO of Rampage. Like you have to set up your camp. You find your coaches. You find your management. I don't have a team that just gives me that. So if I feel that I need that, if I need a nutritionist, I find the best. If I need a wrestling coach, I find the best, mm-hmm. right? But Sam Calvita, my nutritionist, strength conditioning coach, I find the best. Um, I've been very fortunate that I've just been kind of raised to be mentally tough. Um, I think more than most, just kind of like let, like blocking out the noise. Like for instance, me getting suspended and all that bullshit and then coming back and having to fight Sanhagen, you know how much fucking pressure was on that coming back and me blowing my fucking knee out? Like, yeah, if you didn't win that, you were done. Yeah, I mean, like, I would have been fucking just ridiculed. You Even know? though you were one of the best to ever do it at that point, no doubt about it. But if you don't win that, you're done, right? Like, that's the pressure. I mean, a lot of the hype's gone, you know? So, like, that's in the back of your head. But for whatever reason, I've just done a really good job of just blocking blocking out a haters. Can't see that's them. It. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro. Same I, for you. I was, I was there witnessing the haters when you when you got banned and stuff yeah. like that. I was witnessing it. And, and, like, I, I met you and I, and I know you personally and stuff like that. I don't get close to a lot of uh, mm-hmm. MMA fighters. I just, I just never, never did. But... You know, him, train with him and one. I, I I got to know him. They're good dudes, and you know, you don't wish it on nobody. Like shit, we all make mistakes and mm. shit like that. I but but your but your last but your last fight though, um, people can't help but res- respect you. You know what I'm saying? Because you you went out there injured and you and you still tried to fight. You know what I'm saying? Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was just something I didn't feel like I knew I had to do. You know, and it's that mental toughness. Of just like you know, life's gonna throw you these fucking wild curveballs. And how, how well can you deal with them? You know, because a lot of people just get shut down and then they're not meant to, they're not meant to do what we're doing. Like, there's a, 
I was talking about that quarterback show, right? So they they get to play 16 weeks before they have their big games, right? We don't play a game. Like, this isn't the sport I'm doing. You didn't get to do – you didn't get to play this again. No one ever says, hey, let's go play MMA. You know what I mean? Like, all these guys got to play football and play basketball. Mm. Then they get all these games every week to where they have a new chance to prove themselves. Like, our every fight we have is a Super Bowl. Every fucking fight. You have one big fight, then you're fighting another, like, four or five, six months later, another big up, hyped up fight. Like, the pressure that goes into it, like, a lot of people aren't made to do it. And so you just got to – you got to trick yourself that you're the baddest man on the fucking planet all the time. You know what I mean? I mean, that's got to take so much mental toughness. But what about these guys that are kind of like picking and choosing their, their routes? Like, say, Aljo and his teammate Rob and whatnot. Like, guys like that, like two top dogs, you know, in the same division not wanting to fight each other. Like, is that mental toughness or is that just good business? Like, at what point do, do we start seeing the sport go that way? That's a good question. I mean, they've done good business with guys that are very promotable, right? Like, I mean, we've seen it with Conor McGregor. He's definitely backed himself up. But to get to where he was at, they built him up. Sean O'Malley, they built him up with the right fights at the right time. He has had to back it up. Now he just beat Jan, a big fight for him. But before that, they kind of gave him the right fights to promote him. So it is a business. Ultimately, that's how we get paid. But um, I would like to see a more pure, like the bet, like one always fights two. You know, yeah, like, like that yeah. should happen, right? I mean, you would like to see that happen, yeah. but it's not it's not always the biggest money. Like you you think Connor fights Chandler? It's a good question, man. I don't know. I mean What's think, his motivation? He he's rich as fuck, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what's his motivation? I think it's his ego though, you know? I think it's just like You think he still has an ego? Yeah, well, I mean, for sure. I mean, I think that's only like why else would you fight? If I had that much kind of fucking money, there's no way I'm fighting again, dude. <laughs> man, didn't, <laughs> like, didn't he set his like his whiskey company for Okay. Yeah, him and his his manager Audi Audi. I mean, they put together one of the best deals of all time. If you if you was worth a hundred million, would you still fight? Oh, I think he's worth like five hundred million. Now. Not, yo, yeah. yeah, for real? Yeah, I think so. Five hundred million, you wouldn't fight. If I'm worth ten million dollars, I ain't fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, fuck. I mean, ten million I, not enough no more, bro. I know. I mean, what well, is if you're smart? If you set yeah, up the yeah. businesses, you I like that. I like that. Do. Response. You got a couple of businesses. What's I like can, that response. Can you talk about? Man? I have some stuff in the works that's going to be fucking massive that I don't really want to talk about oh, okay, yet. That okay. could be huge. It could make me tenfold of anything I ever thought about making in the UFC, okay. and that's working itself out. Um, so in, I mean, a lot of it's hopefully to be out here, and I'll start talking about it in the next like three, four months. All right. Um, it's in the building phase. I don't want to jinx it. I'll tell some of my close friends and yeah, yeah, about yeah, it, but yeah. don't want to jinx that. Well, shit. I thought it was something you can promote. We were trying to eventually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd yeah. love to promote it. You yeah. know, I mean, to be honest, I don't want people to even know I own it though. I want it to live out past me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I don't want like you don't want to build a company. See, if you're a celebrity, you don't want to build a company that the only reason why you're getting sales is because of your name. Right. Right. Like yeah. you're only going to make it so far. I only have so many fans, right? right. And a lot of them are haters. Right. So right. it's like, I want this, I want this company to outlive me. I want it to be in every mom, mom and dad's house. I want it to be in every child's diet. Yeah. Like right. if I'm talking about food. Right. So it's like, it needs to outlive me. I don't even right. care if people even know I own it. Right? That's smart. Yeah. yeah. I mean, business in today's time is really different. You have to have a, a diverse base. You have to have a consistent marketing you have to have, you know, a new adaptive way of how you look at the economy, the market, your demographics. And and to be honest, like the game of the 90s and the early 2000s and even the 2015s and 2010s are gone. Like the game has adapted so much in business with e-commerce and digital marketing, paid media, the way people look at businesses. I mean, you know, Jackson's a direct to consumer business. We only sell online. We don't even sell in retail. Mm -hmm. And we're one of the biggest men's jewelry brands. It's like you can do anything now. You can you can really accomplish any goals if you have a really built in vertical system with good staff and a good route to market, you know, because too many people launch and then they think that's it. The game's over. I launch. But dude, no one's buying your product. No one's believing in your product. If you don't have a thoughtful game plan and you're on it consistently every single day, mm. that's the hard part now. Yeah. People just launch and they think, oh, well, I did it. I launched a brand or, mm -hmm. you know, in the early 90s. Oh, I'm going to get a celebrity, put him on a billboard. Now we made it like pavilions and bonds and wholesale markets like Costco and Walmart, they don't care anymore. They want sell through. They want people to come through. It's why guys like Mr. Beast or mm -hmm. Logan Paul and KSI with prime are just destroying the market. And you got guys like monster and rebel freaking out. Like, okay, what do we do now? Mm. Yeah. I think some people just built for, for business. Cause you know, I've been knowing bear for a while and I've seen him and he's a, he's a good businessman. And I see you doing your stuff. I'm like, so I try to do a little stuff here and there. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So I, I invested my money in like, Stuff that I don't have to do a whole like land and all that stuff like real estate. I got a couple of houses and do all this stuff, but you know I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to do more something fun. Like I always wanted to like open up a bar. It's people like no, most bars fail. Like yeah, you're right. I want to open up a speakeasy, something cool. I like to do something fun. 
But, you know, I, I'm kind of scared. that I think real estate's your best bet, man. Real estate's one of those things, like, even when you do lose, you're going to come back. Like, real estate's still, I mean, even all of the stuff I have going on, real estate is still what I've made the most of my money off of. You know, just by making the smart purchases, you go and you sell a house and then you find a house that's or a piece of property and you build what you want. It's going to be like equity's going to be up through the roof. Like that's it's a pretty easy bet. You, know, yeah, if you got good, the money to do it. appreciation and it's safe. Yeah. Too many businesses are too risky. Like at that bar, you know, yeah, no one comes yeah. and then you have overhead. It just yeah. becomes a, a, a that's, nightmare. That's what I'm doing now. That's where most of my money going now because I, I brought like 78 acres in, in my hometown. Oh, hell yeah. And, I, and I'm trying to build like 250 houses on it. Hell yeah. But then I, I started doing it. Then people saying like, oh, the housing market is going to crash. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. If the housing market crashes, they're going to have to rent and it's going to come back. Like no matter what, even if it crashes, you got to be able to like... That's when you start buying up homes when it crashes because it's going to come back. You know, people are going to have to rent. All these people that lose their houses because they can't pay yeah, their mortgages, yeah. they have to go out and find something to rent. And then all these single family homes, right, that say you have a, you have a couple kids and you lost your house, you got you to go and rent a house that you're paying just as much for mm -hmm. your mortgage, you're paying rent. You know? Yeah, the economy is cyclical. Right. I mean, it always comes back. It's a repetitive process. You look at the S&P in the 90s to the early 2000s to the later 2000s through COVID, and now it's, it's always, you know, a positive gain. It always... Mm -hmm eventually goes up like the economy just we have one of the strongest gdps in the world it's going to work itself out but speaking of, of ufc kind of just to get back to this real quick i just want to get your thoughts so a guy like mcgregor and chandler on the ufc and the ultimate fighter and obviously they're trying to build up this super fight does a guy like mcgregor still have what it takes to beat a guy like chandler who's literally this is all he's doing and he needs to fight I think it's the right fight for McGregor. Really? You know, I think that Chandler is going to fight him the way he fights. He likes to go guns a-blazing and throw power and get hit with power. And um, I'd say that I think McGregor's probably got the better chin. He's got a better reach. I think he's the probably the better striker. If I was Chandler, I'd be smart and take his ass down. You know what I mean? But he's not going to. He's a, he's a fan favorite, and I, I love him for that as well, too. He's going to go guns a-blazing. He's going to be the... Um, like he when he fights Justin Gaethje, he fights these guys. Like you know, he some, loves taking them. There's some upper opportunities where he can win the fight, but he's like, "Fuck it, let's go." And that's why he's promotable. But I think it's the right fight for McGregor. Um, I still think don't, don't get me wrong. It's, I don't know who'd win the fight, but I still think it's a good chance for him to against a top tier athlete to get his name back on top. You know, mm -hmm. I say I, I, if I had to bet, which I really don't do often, mm -hmm. I, I would I would go on my own channel because I just. I just feel like McGregor's just, he's just not there. I just don't feel like his mind is No there. passion. I, I just, like you say, he got 500 million. Probably like what, more. Why is he even, why is he even still doing the Ultimate Fighter? Because mm -hmm. him and Dana mm -hmm. probably be really tight, you know? I don't see, I don't know if I had $500 million in the bank, what, what would I be doing? What, what you might want to fight even more. Might, you might be so bored, right? Yeah, you, you might, might be, be like, so bored after a year or two off and, you know. I think money, obviously, a certain amount of money, you can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you get to that point, nothing's exciting. You lose that adrenaline rush to anything. You're, it's like a draining your gland. It's like a, a drug addict or an alcoholic. Like they eventually get to a point where it's just numb. That's, I mean, that's a really good point because I've lived my life just redlined and adrenaline and crazy shit. And if I wasn't so in deep with building these companies out right now and like it taking up so much of my time, I would need some sort of fix. And you know? like, Mm. I'm lucky that I got addicted to something that's healthy for me because otherwise mm. I think I probably would have been an alcoholic. I would have been getting into drugs. Like I need that form of adrenaline. I need like that. Like the everyday life of just sitting on the couch is just not for me. You, you have know? an addictive personality? Very addictive. Yeah. Mm. When, when I get in, if it's my diet, if it's my working out schedule, I mean, after my fights, if I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink, I'm going to mm. black out. You know, it's like, I don't, <laughs> it's not a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, mm. but if like, what do you like to drink? Oh, um, tequila, wow. tequila, soda water. What do you like to drink? Uh, I, I I really like old fashions right now. Mm. I like old whiskey. Fashions. Yeah, you want a big big ice cube? Yeah, I yeah. want the big square or big circle ice cube. The big circle ones. What's, are dope. what's the what's the name of that black cherry that they put in there? I don't know. It's a name. I, I think don't. it's black cherry. No, no, it has a weird name that I can't I can't remember. And I like the I like the I like the way it tastes. But you like to get hammered, black out, and just no, like no, no. I like to I like to have like a good. Good buzz. Like, a lot of times my friends can't tell when I'm drunk. Yeah. Because, you know, where I'm from, I'm from Memphis, right? And where I'm from is not really safe. And um, I grew up, I grew up in like a, um, I grew up in a real tough uh, neighborhood. And, and so um, a lot of times, you know, is I see, I see like people get drunk, you know, you know, alcohol, you know, crackheads, alcoholics on the street, you know what I'm saying? 
you get drunk and I seen them get their ass kicked and stuff like that. And I feel like you at a disadvantage when you drunk and you, you're easy to get knocked out, right? So me taking taking all this knowledge that I have from growing up in, in the street and stuff like that. So if I'm out somewhere, I, I like to pretend like I'm 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 sober. I'm super sober. So it's like a defense mechanism. A lot of my yeah. friends they can't tell that I'm they can't tell. So yeah. I don't like to be stumbling around. But if that if you ever out with me, you see I'm stumbling around I'm drunk. It was a big mistake. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hate. I mean, I I hate getting blacked out. Right? It's not that I I like it. It's just I just can't control it sometimes. Right? When I start drinking, I'm feeling good. It's like I just don't know when to stop. Yeah. And then I go from like just being like buzz, 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 blacked out. And then I make a fool of myself, <laughs> do stupid shit. Like it's never good. I would never. I would. I never want to choose to get blacked out. But it's like I don't yeah, have yeah, a choice. So, sometimes, yeah. you know? the, the good thing about me though, when I drink, if I if I chill out for like 15, uh, 20 minutes, I sober up fast. Really? Yeah. So I yeah, I know. I saw even at Nobu. I yeah. saw you drink a few. Then you mixed in like a little green tea, and you were back. Yeah. I was like, oh, he living. Yeah. I mean, I don't drink, so I don't know. I don't know. You know, I've been Better going off. out to clubs with you for years. Yeah. I never drink. I drive you home. You've never. That's drink? How I always. No, I don't drink. Never once. Never. Well, I mean, I I used to drink one day a year on my birthday. Okay. And then everybody would come out. We throw a big party. But I hate it. I I don't like not being that's, in control. That's right. I never. I I, I didn't think about. It. I never seen you drink. Why, why is that though? I just don't like to not be in control. Mm. Yeah. I Are like you a control to, freak? No, I just like to always know what's going on. I don't want to make a mistake. I think I work too hard for too many things, and I mm. think I'm around so many people. I don't want to be, mm. you know, the one to to pull the trigger on something that goes wrong. Or yeah. I'm already wild as it is. Next thing you know, I'm you know trying to fight someone, thinking I'm TJ Dillashaw in the club. <laughs> I don't need all that smoke. I was actually yeah. thinking about uh, quitting uh, the quitting drinking because I'm a social drinker anyway. But then I was thinking like my lifestyle. I just all the friends I got all over the world and stuff like that. I, I you know, and a lot of my friends are Vietnamese. It'd be hard for you. It's hard. A lot of my friends are Vietnamese, and if you if you know about Vietnamese people, they will feed you drinks. They'll put a funnel in your mouth. <laughs> no, motherfucker, you drink. You drink now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I, I just gotta, you know, yeah. you gotta, gotta find a, a happy balance. Yeah. For, before we let you go, TJ, I want to know who are your three favorite fighters of all time? <sighs> George St. Pierre, just because of him being a legend, the way that he like took the sport, and like I think the first of his kind to. Uh, being a, like full blown legitimate like professional with his diet, with his workout schedule, like he's doing gymnastics, he's like doing all this shit and like outside the box stuff that a lot of other guys don't do. Um, so that was like a guy that I kind of like set myself to. I was like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right, and that's how he's doing it. Um, I like Nate Diaz or Nick Diaz. I mean, I like them both, but I like Nick Diaz. Sorry, when I was because he was just so he he. I grew up an hour from where he's from. Him and him and uh, Nate. And then he was always just so real. You could tell that he would get uncomfortable, right? But that like, he never had to act who he was. He was just, that was who he was. He yeah, was so real, best. such a gangster with like call guys in. He was like, that's one of my all time favorites just because of that. Um, another guy that's like that, that I really like that just retired is uh, Robbie Lawler. Oh yeah. yeah. He's one of my, and he's just been around forever. And he's been able to yeah. adapt with the sport. You know, a guy yeah. like that's been, yeah. it's pretty epic to be around for that long and then be able to evolve. Like, not to become champion until later in your career, and then yeah. like still be fighting, and then still get a big win. Just got a sick knockout, like yeah, yeah. You know, it's good. To, it's good to see the Diaz brothers in the mix. They don't get enough credit, I think, for right. the type of energy they brought to the yeah. sport in terms of that. Like, dude, they created this whole fan base of mm -hmm. UFC, which was this unique, like even the, even their background and mm -hmm. the demographic of like this, like kind of Latin inner city market. Like, they really did bring out that like street fighter feeling and they brought that to the ufc in such a unique way that it stayed all these years you mm -hmm. know they don't yeah. get enough credit for that and so i'm not saying it just because he's here because it was rampage jackson as well too just, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do the pride days Legend, dude like man. pride day like you were like a like a pioneer of the sport and just like entertaining fucking knockout artists with like you gotta love the howling you know the big yeah. fucking chain like, i appreciate that you were man. a character before anyone was being characters too you know yeah. like yeah, you laid you laid the the for sure the groundwork on how MMA fighters should be characters. Because I, I just can't do nothing boring. I'm yeah. sorry. I just couldn't do it. Like ripping the door down in fucking Ultimate Fighter House oh, and shit. Yeah. Like that stuff. I mean, dude. Hey, don't you love that scene? What? Ripping the door down? No. No. I, 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 I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I've never posted it. Why not? Oh, really? One of the best meme videos of all time. Because it's one of my most embarrassing TV nah. moments. No, you ripped nah. the door off the hinges. <laughs> well, well, you look like the you're supposed hole. to be mad, yeah, bro. Like mad. you guys were losing fight. Like at least you showed passion for your for your team yeah. and your, for your coaching. So, yeah, you but know, you really don't like that scene. No, because somebody sent. You know, I do my own um, GTA server. You know, MMA server. Mm -hmm. I do, and somebody made a clip for me to post, and I have a hard time posting it because they put in there me ripping down the fucking door. I was really. I, 
I was I'm really embarrassed about that because uh, I I was I really lost my temper. I was really like I was really mad, and I I just get embarrassed. I just get embarrassed when that happened because like, mm. a lot of times I can't control myself. And I've lost friends and stuff over the years. Oh, so you were really mad when you ripped the door off? Oh yeah, that wasn't fake. That wasn't fake. That wasn't fake. Yeah, just thank God it was a cheap ass door. Yeah, dude, I mean, they're yeah, like yeah, they're paper thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing came yeah. out quick. Yeah, that was a cheap door. They know? knew something was about to happen. With yeah, you. but if, but you'd be surprised. Most of our houses doors are just like that. We mm -hmm. just never hit it. So enough. how many doors you ripped off before? I'm not going to. Say <laughs> <no>. <laughs> he knew that. He knew that real but quick. Do, though, huh? do, do you do you know? Um, how I got the name Rampage, though. Nah. You named yourself Rampage? No. No, my cousin named me that when I was eight years old because of stuff like that. Punching punching holes in walls, fucking up the house. Cause you remember the video game? Rampage? Yes. Yeah, my cousin named me that when I was eight years old because I'm the nicest guy. This is one reason. Not nice. I agree. I'm mm -hmm. the nicest guy, but. Funniest guy, too. Yeah. But when I lose my temper, man, it's. I don't want. I don't ever want to see. That's I've what, never personally seen it. Yeah, right? I don't, and I get embarrassed. I don't want people to see it. That's why I'm always joking. That's why I'm always. I have to keep myself laughing because I just don't. I just don't trust. I just don't trust myself if I'm like mad. I just don't do it. And, 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 I love it. Yeah, I love it. Speaking of video games, what video games are you playing right now? Well, I am playing like GTA. The server. This is my RP server though, like oh. role playing. I, I still play Overwatch. I try to get into some need for speed, like the old the old need for speed. But right now, it's not no, it's nothing really good out. So I'm playing old games again, like uh, Days Gone and stuff okay. like that. I want to play that. Um, they, I want to play that 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 one on. They got the TV show out now. The one on PlayStation. I forgot the name of it. It's a that zombie guy with the, the zombie game with the fungus or whatever. It's I don't on know. TV show. You play Call of Duty. Yeah, I played. I played a little bit of Call of Duty. You play Call of Duty. I did a lot during uh, 2020. Like, you liked fucking, it? There's, yeah, it was a good time. Like the, the first Warzone game was dope. I played a shit ton of it. Like would stay up to like three o'clock. Live the talking, morning. talking to people. Yeah, they know it's you. Uh, well, my name was Killershaw on there. So every now and then you get someone to be like, "Hey, is this fucking TJ?" I'd be like, "Yeah, what's up?" Yeah. <laughs> would you talk it's loud like, to them? Uh, not, not. I mean, I'm not a guy that talks a bunch, man. Like, I don't like in my fight. I don't talk shit. Like, I don't know. I've never been a guy that's been. I guess feel comfortable to be like. I get maybe even comfortable in my own skin to be able to talk shit on people. You know. Um. So no. Not yeah, that's crazy. I mean, but before we go, just to kind of clear the air, kind of try to feel where you're at with this. What's the What's the relationship right now with you and Uriah, you and Cody? Or is it still? You that, know? No, I mean, I that that bridge got burned. You know what I mean? Like that shit was personal. And they fucking tried coming at me hard. Like, all for the thing that I got kicked out of a fucking gym because I was training with Dwayne Ludwig. They made me make a choice. It's either Team Alpha Male or Dwayne Ludwig. It's like, motherfuckers, this is my life. You know what I mean? Like, you're making me choose, like, we're, you guys are girlfriends or something. So the, they made me choose a, a team, and then I chose Dwayne, and then they just, like, fucking attack me with it. I understand it's, like, promoting a fight, but it got too personal. So I haven't, I haven't talked to those guys ever since. You think that bridge will ever be, you know, mended and kind of brought back? Yeah, I mean, it has a possibility to. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, is there if, you, if you'd there, asked though? me that a couple of years ago, I said, no, fuck no. But I think no matter what, like, there's no point of me holding on to animosity. It's going to do nothing. Yeah. There's nothing in it. No matter who you, like, hate, whatever it is, like, it's never going to do you any good by holding on to this animosity and fucking hating someone. It's like, it's going to be a lot more beneficial if I was like, let that shit go. I don't let it affect my life. Like, if I see them, cool, whatever. Nah, kind of bro, thing. that's so. true. That's true words because um, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, me and Randy Contour, mm. we didn't like each other for years. Like, it's been, it's been going on, I think, s s t over 12, 17 years. It's been a long time. I didn't I didn't like him. What started that? Um um, he he he's used to sponsor me with those shirts, the screen for two shirts. Mm. But he would do interviews and picking my opponents over me, like you know, doing their picks. Oh yeah. And so Chris Angel, <laughs> we just did a podcast with Chris Angel recently, and he had Randy Couture on, and we mended the bun. So it's like I didn't see his side. I just got mad at him. Yeah. And then Randy, he he sat down. We sat down like this far away from each other. He said, "Look, you know, it was my job to pick fights and stuff like that." He said, "I sponsored thirty guys with my clothing line back then. I wasn't thinking." Like oh I can't be honest because of because of the because of you know you're I my sponsored. athlete yeah, yeah yeah so he was like I just gave my honest opinion and you know I had I had to respect that at least you guys squash it yeah, I mean it as like, you as you guys are still like legends in the game yeah, so both times, of you guys time it's good yeah. yeah at least you're setting a good example of the yeah. future that you know you hold on to that nothing happens yeah. nothing good comes out of that you're right Faber's a good guy from what when I know him you know, I know him since King of the Cage I really I really like him I don't know him as well as you but you know I, I mean I was, it was a tough situation too because look I was world champion and I was at Alpha Male trying to and he wants me to help promote the gym and build the gym up and it's business at the same time right like 
by me going to Dwayne is taking business right out of his door. And I'm sure that did not feel good to him, right? right? But when I look at it, and this is my life, and I'm the world champion, and I want to do what was best for me and my family at the time, it's like, how you give me an ultimatum? You know, like how you yeah. make me choose yeah. my coach over my team. And it's bullshit that I got put into that situation, but I can see it from his side as well, too. And I'm look, man, I'm not the easiest guy to do. When you start getting into competition stuff and in practice, I'm – a rough guy, I go hard. Like I'm not the easiest guy to probably get along with, though. Either you know what I mean. Like yeah. outside, we're cool, whatever. But yeah, we, you want to win. You're yeah. a competitor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. yeah, nothing wrong with that. All right, thank you for um, coming and yeah, kicking in with us, man. It's good to of see course, you. Of course, hey, always good to see you, man. Yeah. I always put a smile on my it's face. Amazing, bro. I thank do. you. Of course, nice. can't wait to see you in there again. Yeah, let's do it. There y'all have it. Fade on sight. Brought y'all another legend, T.J. Kershaw. Bear, thank you for uh, giving me That's this it. opportunity to talk to my friends. Amazing, bro. Yeah. This is great. To see two legends go at it, couldn't beat that. Thanks, man.